Previously from the Hood Blogger. So you know, that's how he said that he had dealt with that situation. He was basically trying to challenge Gil and them, you know, to a debate. And basically he was looking at it like they wasn't using their platforms and the power that they had in the city to stop the violence. Now, you know, these young boys, you know, the not, I can't even say these young boys, man, because every hood is out of control. It take a lot more than, than activism or, you know, giving speeches to, you know, try to stop a city from violence. Or every city, it, it goes up and down. You know what I'm saying? Like, even Chicago, like, Chicago had times where they was chilling. So the ones that got to really chill is the ones that's really in control of the Paris, of the, you know. Hey, yo, this SV Twist, the hood blogger. You already know how I carry it, man. Shout out to everybody that's been rocking with the content. Make sure y'all hit that like button and hit that sub button. Man, we trying to get the channel to 20 stacks, man. So if y'all digging the content and all that, make sure y'all sub. But we are gonna get straight into it, man. Today, we are gonna cover a member of the JBM, Leroy Bucky Davis. Now, when it comes to the JBM, and when it comes to Philly period, you know what I'm saying? A lot of, a lot of the, the hood celebrities don't get the proper credit, you know. Um, we know that New York and all of that was just like, you know, it was like a popularity, you know what I'm saying, contest out with, with like the New York people and stuff. But you know, a lot of people in these other places like Philly and DC, all these other areas, you know, people was doing the same stuff, bro. I mean, like, getting the same if not more money you know what i'm saying like you know the, the when it comes to like the jbm precisely like they was millionaires they was young millionaires and they was doing the same stuff that was getting done in new york but you know for some reason they don't really get spoken about like that i know a few people did a couple docs on them but i mean like you know movie wise and stuff like that so you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to carry it how I carry it for the city over here on this channel. And, you know, um, sometimes people might be like, oh, these stories are glorified. But at the end of the day, this is a certain age group of people that should be watching these joints. Like, your kids should be watching kids YouTube. You know what I'm saying? If you're worrying about who coming across this kind of content. But we're going to get straight into it, man. Today, we're going to speak on Leroy Bucky Davis. Leroy, man, he was raised in a full house with cousins, aunts, and uncles, and, you know, things of that nature. 1974, you know, he had joined the Southwest Youth Center where, you know, he had got introduced to the boxing trainer, Dick Turner. He was a beast in that ring, you know what I'm saying? He definitely was a beast. There's plenty of stories out there about how nice he was with those gloves. And that led him to get certain relationships later on in life, but we're gonna get into that. But, you know, around the age of 16, he became a parent. And a lot of times, and especially like back then, it was even harder than what it is today. You know, um, although it's like, a lot higher to get stuff today like cribs and everything and cars is even way higher than what they was back then but you know back then they wasn't really getting paid too much especially if you're like 16 years old it's only but so much bread you can make it ain't like people was becoming like entrepreneurs through instagram or starting online businesses that stuff wasn't happening back then so they had less you know choices of success back then so you know with him being 16 and you know being out southwest being in philly period he felt as though you know he had to do what everybody was doing that was getting money you dig what i'm saying so he started selling coke on 52nd and chester with his man outlaw you know what i'm saying and at the time he was going to bartram 
But they also called him Lucky Bucky because, you know, he was nice for them dice and pool, you know. He was nice, period. But he also knew how to, you know, hustle people, you know what I'm saying, when it came to, like, them, them dice and stuff like that. So, you know, um, you know, one day he was, you know, got caught up in the dice game, you know what I'm saying, trying to finesse an old head. And one of these old heads was ready to, you know, get busy with him. But at the time of this happening, it was a, you know, a, a, a real highly ranked JBM member that went by the name of Black Sam. And Black Sam knew him from around the neighborhood. So, you know, Black Sam had intervened and all of that and was like, no, nah, it's cool. Let me rock. That's my youngin. And then from that thing on, Black Sam was like, come on, you know, I'm going to put you on some bread. You know, and then at that point, he went from, you know, selling soft to, you know, got introduced to, you know, like, we, we cooking all this up. You dig what I'm saying? Remind you, this was probably like around like 86. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> like 86. This was like around like 86. So, you know, for those of y'all that know, like, you know, 86, 87, 88, like, you know what I'm saying? When she start, once people was cooking up around them years, you dig what I'm saying? Like you was up, like crack was that that was that was fresh to the game right there. And even people that wasn't millionaires off of the heart back then, everybody ate once that. If you sold hard in the '80s, you was eating one way or the other. You might not have been a millionaire, but you was damn sure touching thousands. You know so. Like I said, 86, he officially joined the JBM at 86. He was one of the Black Sam top dogs. Aaron Jones had, you know, pe was peeping how Bucky moved. You know, if, for those that don't know, like Aaron Jones is, you know what I'm saying, one of the top dogs of the JBM. And, um, you know, he had wanted Bucky, you know, to be a part of that. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, um... He wanted Bucky to be a part of, you know, like right up under him. Like Aaron Jones was like high ranking, you know what I'm saying, JBM member. And he was liking how Bucky moved. So he had told Black Sam, like, you know, he need him to be working up under him. You know what I'm saying? Aaron Jones had told Black Sam that he wanted Bucky to work under him. So, you know, him and Black Sam, Aaron Jones, they already had, you know, such a, a, a good relationship and respect for each other that that was no issue. So once Aaron Jones put Bucky up under him, you know, Aaron Jones put him in position to be a, you know what I'm saying, a squad boss. From there on out, he ran the Southwest Fraction. You dig what I'm saying? That mean like the Southwest JBM, he was the top guy. You know what I mean? And... and you know, the stories from, you know, what I heard, how they was carrying it out there, like, you know, Southwest was just extra fly with it. They was talking about, you know, like how they was, they used to run it up at Boyd's. They was rocking them Gator boots heavy, you know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, like, you know, other like fractions of the, the, the JBM, they was, you know, looking at them like, you know, they dress fly like they like the pretty boy type guys you know what i'm saying but you had like celebrities like easy e gerald lavert bobby brown sugar ray mike tyson like these people was you know they was popping out for for uh for bucky you know what i'm saying bucky had crazy relationships with people and then you know they they got the, the one of the infamous stories out there where you know um don king was right next to Bucky. They was taking the picture and Don King was looking at Bucky jewelry like, damn, like understanding that he was only 19. Like, how is he dressing like this? You know, look at his jewelry, his jewelry, like better than mine. You dig what I'm saying? And, you know, obviously he wasn't a, ce a celebrity. You know what I'm saying? And people knew who he was as far as moving through the streets. But not only that, like Will Smith had ties with Bucky. You know what I'm saying? Through Charlie Mack. Charlie Mack was definitely, you know what I'm saying, really connected. You know what I'm saying? And Will Smith went through issues with a promote with a uh with a promoter. And you know, 
The word is one of the JBL members had put hands on him, broke the boy eye socket and all that. Yeah, you know I mean, had had tightened him up. And I had also heard that, you know, his kid had ended up, came up missing, but then had got returned to him and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, with this happening, this is where Will Smith had left Philly. And this is all like a little, probably like a year of time gap between that and when he started the show. So if you notice how like the show is, the original show, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, how it starts off, it has truth to it. I got in one little fight, you know what I'm saying? What do you say? My mom got scared, you know, and you know what I'm saying? That if you pay attention to how the show starts, it's so, it's so truth into it. It's so truth into it. Now, the question is, his mom probably didn't know what was going on, but his mom also probably knew that you know, them JBM guys was out there too. You know what I'm saying? Regardless if he was with them or not, she was like, you know, you're going you gonna to get tied up in something serious. The only problem is Will Smith ain't had that bread. He wasn't financially stable to really move like that. So what happens? You know, Bucky being who he is, you know, he gave him a nice advance. You know what I mean? I heard rumors of, of, of 15 stacks, you know what I'm saying? I heard rumors of 10 stacks. Regards to the fact, remind you, this is in the 80s, so whatever it was, it put him in position to, you know, get up out the city. And on top of that, you know, Bucky was like, you need to get out the city too, you know what I'm saying? It was telling him, but after that, it was like, it was like, you know, parties, like, you know what I'm saying? This was at a time of him getting into doing the, the, the sitcom that he ended up having. It was crazy parties. And they said, you know, Bucky was always there with him and stuff like that. You know, eventually, you know, before we get to the end of this story, you're going to already know Bucky didn't even get a chance to make it. You know what I'm saying? To see his success. But, you know, I heard that Will Smith wrote a book and... You know, he spoke about the situation. He just didn't put Bucky name in it. You dig what I'm saying? So, you know, just to, to keep carrying it, you know what I'm saying? Around 1987, things started getting even more hectic for the JBM. But listen, I need y'all to understand this. Because I see a lot of guys from out of state and, you know what I'm saying, different areas. They talk about when the Shire Posse came to Philly. Like, let's make this clear. The Shire Posse, they got busy. Ain't nothing taken away from them getting busy. They was coming from Jamaica and New York. You dig what I'm saying? They they was coming from Jamaica, migrating to New York, but they still had people coming straight from Jamaica and jumping in the mix with the other members. And they would they would move certain ways and then they would shoot back up to Jamaica. So this is what happened. They was already doing what they wanted out in New York. You know what I'm saying? They, they was out there, you know, chopping people heads off and all that. What happens, what, 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 what happened was like, they came to Philly. When they came to Philly, they didn't come to Philly and go at the JBM. They didn't come at, they didn't, they didn't come to Philly and, and, you know, start trying to take over the JBM stuff. What they was doing was they was coming over to Philly and they was getting it. It was like younger hustlers. Like these guys was like 16, 17. And they was coming over there to younger guys that was trying to build up neighborhoods. And they was torturing these young boys. They was coming up. They was rocking them. Till, you know what I'm saying? One day they had did an announcement on the news and was talking about it. Like, you know, these guys coming over here. They, they rocking these young boys. You know what I mean? And taking over. They, you know what I mean? Putting their work out there. JBM was already going to war with different parts of the city. Once JBM had got a whiff of them coming and doing what they was talking about, you know, like how they was, they used to run it up at boys. They was rocking them gator boots heavy. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, like, you know, other like fractions of the, the, the JBM, they was, you know, looking at them like, you know, they dress fly like they like the pretty boy type guys you know what i'm saying but you had like celebrities like easy e gerald lavert bobby brown sugar ray mike tyson like 
these people was, you know, they was popping out for for uh for Bucky. You know what I'm saying? Bucky had crazy relationships with people. And then, you know, they, they got the, the one of the infamous stories out there where, you know, um Don King was right next to Bucky. They was taking the picture. And Don King was looking at Bucky Jewelry like, damn, like, understanding that he was only 19. Like, how is he dressing like this? You know, look at his jewelry. His jewelry, like, better than mine. You dig what I'm saying? And, you know, obviously, he wasn't a, ce a celebrity. You know what I'm saying? And people knew who he was as far as moving through the streets. But not only that, like, Will Smith had ties with Bucky. You know what I'm saying through Charlie Mack. Charlie Mack was definitely, you know what I'm saying, really connected. You know what I'm saying? And Will Smith went through issues with a promote with a uh, with a promoter. And you know, the word is one of the JBL members had put hands on him, broke the boy eye socket and all that. Yeah you know I mean, had had tightened him up. And I had also heard that, you know, his kid had ended up, came up missing, but then had got returned to him and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, with this happening, this is where Will Smith had left Philly. And this is all like a little, probably like a year of time gap between that and when he started this show. So if you notice how like the show is, the original show, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, how it starts off, it has truth to it. I got in one little fight, you know what I'm saying? What do you say? My mom got scared, you know, and you know what I'm saying? That if you pay attention to how the show starts, it's so, it's so truth into it. It's so truth into it. Now, the question is, his mom probably did know what was going on, but his mom also probably knew that. You know, them JBM guys was out there too. You know what I'm saying? Regardless if he was with them or not, she was like, you know, you're going you gonna to get tied up in something serious. The only problem is Will Smith ain't had that bread. He wasn't financially stable to really move like that. So what happens? You know, Bucky being who he is, you know, he gave him a nice advance. You know what I mean? I heard rumors of, of, of 15 stacks, you know what I'm saying? I heard rumors of 10 stacks. Regards to the fact, remind you, this is in the 80s, so whatever it was, it put him in position to, you know, get up out the city. And on top of that, you know, Bucky was like, you need to get out the city too, you know what I'm saying? They was telling him, but after that, it was like, it was like, you know, parties, like, you know what I'm saying? This was at a time of him getting into doing the, the, the sitcom that he ended up having. It was crazy parties. And they said, you know, Bucky was always there with him and stuff like that. You know, eventually, you know, before we get to the end of the story, you're going to already know Bucky didn't even get a chance to make it. You know what I'm saying? To see his success. But, you know, I heard that Will Smith wrote a book and... You know, he spoke about the situation. He just didn't put Bucky name in it. You dig what I'm saying? So, you know, just to, to keep carrying it, you know what I'm saying? Around 1987, things started getting even more hectic for the JBM. But listen, I need y'all to understand this. Because I see a lot of guys from out of state and, you know what I'm saying, different areas. They talk about when the Shire Posse came to Philly. Like, let's make this clear. The Shire Posse, they got busy. Ain't nothing taken away from them getting busy. They was coming from Jamaica and New York. You dig what I'm saying? They they was coming from Jamaica, migrating to New York, but they still had people coming straight from Jamaica and jumping in the mix with the other members. And they would they would move certain ways and then they would shoot back up to Jamaica. So this is what happened. They was already doing what they wanted out in New York. You know what I'm saying? They, they was out there, you know, chopping people's heads off and all that. What happens, what, 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 what happened was, like, they came to Philly. When they came to Philly, they didn't come to Philly and go at the JBM. They didn't come at, they didn't, they didn't come to Philly and, and, you know, start trying to take over the JBM stuff. What they was doing was, they was coming over to Philly and they was getting it. It was like younger hustlers, like these guys was like 16, 17, 
and they was coming over there to younger guys that was trying to build up neighborhoods and they was torturing these young boys. They was coming up, they was rocking them. Till, you know what I'm saying? One day they had did an announcement on the news and was talking about it. Like, you know, these guys coming over here, they they rocking these young boys, you know what I mean? And taking over, they, you know what I mean? Putting their work out there. JBM was already going to war with different parts of the city. Once JBM had got a whiff of them coming and doing what they had, they was doing over there. Cause it, it all happened so fast, you know what I'm saying? They they came over, was doing that. JBM found out about it. JBM start going at them. They start going at them, start, you know, they took a few of their guys out. Shawra Posse definitely fought back. It was a back and forth, you know what I'm saying, situation. It was back and forth. They was going back and forth, you know what I mean? I give them that. But, you know, JBM was, it was too many of them and you know, them coming to Philly, they didn't even understand. You can't come to somebody's city and, and, and you know, not really know exactly how it's moving out. I heard somebody say, yeah, the JB, um, uh, the shower posse had remained over there. The shower posse ain't remained in no Philly. Is you crazy? Is you crazy, bro? That, and shout out to the Jamaicans, but, you know, the Jamaicans, they had always, like, had like a, a slot in Philly like but they was always like peaceful guys like they always had like they Jamaican stores and they would sell like they you know they they, they 20s of, of Reggie and stuff it, they was known for having like good Reggie 20s and all that but as far as them taking over anything no the shower posse ended up getting chased back out Philly you know what I'm saying the JBM they was too deep for them the JBM it, it was impossible you know what I mean they had went back over to New York and they jumped back on them planes to Jamaica. But it was definitely a back and forth, but you know, and they was coming with choppers. You know what I'm saying? People didn't really have choppers like that back then. They was definitely coming with choppers, but you know, the JBM also had like Uzis and stuff like that too. So I don't want none of y'all to get it twisted and make it like they came over to Philly and and really, you know what I'm saying, had took something over, cause that's not no fact. And if it's a fact, where is they at? You know what I'm saying? They, you know, I'm talking about from from the 90s on up. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they came around like 87, 88. It wasn't no shower posse, bro. You know what I'm saying? From from any of them years after that, from that time they came. They was non-existent. Actually, I'm gonna do a video getting into more detail about, you know, what happened with that war. You dig what I'm saying? I'm not gonna get too sidetracked, but you know, at the end of the day, after this, like, you know, you know that they after the sour posse situation, you know, it was other people that in the city they wasn't getting down. Don't get it twisted. The whole Philly was not getting down with the JBM. And some people survived that wasn't getting down with them. Some people held their grounds and some ain't make it. But one of those people that, you know, Bucky had to end up approaching was, you know, some guy named Capone. And it wasn't about him, you know, getting down the land down. It was about, you know, um, basically Capone and them guys, which Capone is also from Southwest. They was giving, you know what I'm saying? Basically, Capone was messing with Capone Peoples was giving Bucky Man, his man name was Todd. They was giving him issues. I think it was over some work or something like that. Whatever the situation is, Bucky pulled up on Capone to address Capone about it. Like, that's my folks. Y'all you know I mean, fall back from him. Like, Capone wasn't trying to hear it. They was arguing back and forth. You know, it's a back and forth situation. And Bucky said what he said, turned around, walked off. Capone hit him in his back, hit him in his rear end. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, you know I mean, after that, of course, you know, um, Bucky survived that. But after that, Capone got hit up, you know what I'm saying, by the JBM. But he survived that, you know what I'm saying. And then it was also the issue with Craig Haynes. Craig Haynes being from uptown, you know, um, it's like he was trying to, he was going to mess with the JBM, but then people was in his air like, no, I don't mess with them guys. 
So when they came back to return, he like, no, I'm not messing with it. You know, my folks told me not to mess with y'all. And it was words exchange. But Craig Haynes was connected with, he had family out there paid. You know what I'm saying? The P-Fit, those of y'all don't know, is South Philly. He went out South Philly, you know, and that became a whole nother war. You know what I mean? I'm not going to stretch this video out too much. That's another story of its own that I'm going to get into. But we're going to, you know, push it to, you know, the, the ending of the days. You know what I'm saying? JBM eventually became hottest fish grease. They had people that was talking that was from JBM. You know what I'm saying? Like lower ranking guys. They start telling and giving up information and stuff like that. And, you know, on May 13th, 1990, Bucky stopped by his mom's job to give her some flowers. Then he went to his grandmom's crib after that to chill, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And tapping with his, with his grandmom and all that. Then, you know, like I said, he was a pool shark, you know what I'm saying? He went to go shoot some pool and all of that later that night, you know what I'm saying? Then he came back to his mom's crib, you know what I mean? Then around... 2.30 that next morning, bro. You know what I'm saying? He was pulling up on the house back Creighton Street. He had a female in the world with him. If this ain't, yeah, you know I mean, it shows you that, you know, these young boys that be talking the back door, like that stuff been going on, bro. Forever, since time started. You dig what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure, you know what I'm saying? Cavemen was getting back door. Yeah, you know I mean, but they they had pulled up to the house back Creighton Street. Yeah, the female in the world with them. And you know how you had them screen gates and all that where I know like you know the screen gates, bro, where you gotta unlock them joints, the screen doors where you got like the double door. He went to that, he was on his porch and he was unlocking that joint. And the female right there with him a car pulled up, yeah you know I mean, it then hit him up. Yeah, you know I mean, Bucky ain't survived, but the crazy part is the girl hopped in the car with the shooters and pulled off. His funeral was held May 19th, you know what I'm saying, 1990. People from all over had came, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, that that's the story, and, and you know, that was the, the last moments of Bucky, man. Rest in peace to him. Definitely a hood celebrity. You know I mean, it's SV Twist, the hood blogger, you know what I'm saying? For those of y'all that requested the Bucky drink, I made sure I dropped it real quick. And whatever other requests y'all got, man, DM me. You know what I'm saying? I'ma definitely touch up on that Craig Haynes joint. You know, we're gonna do we gonna do Aaron Jones, everybody, you know what I'm saying? We, we just gonna get in get into the you know the history of Philly, man, on this channel. You know what I'm saying? So if y'all like what y'all be tapping into, man, hit this sub button, man. Let's get this channel to twenty thousand, bro. Twenty thousand subs, man. That, that's the goal right now. You know, you got to take it a step at a time. SV Twiz Hood Blogger.